Head of the scientific panel, Robert Oppenheimer. Uh, Mr. Stimson was clearly thinking along these lines. And although General Marshall and General Groves, who were not members of the committee, uh, were in one or another sense military men, uh, and although they may have had somewhat different sense of urgency and priority, um, they did not, at that meeting, approach these questions in a way very different than that put forward by the panel. And I believe that the horror of the war that was on and the horror of the war which military planners expected to continue for a long time was so very great that uh, it was more or less taken for granted that if a new weapon could put an end to this agony, it should be so used. I remember that we first responded to the question, what do scientists think, by saying that they think a variety of things, and this is only natural. This is not a completely trivial question. We said, second, that we didn't think that we had before us the kind of information or the kind of insight or in back of us the kind of experience that really qualified us to cope with this decision. We said that there seemed to be two great views among scientists and no doubt would be among others if, if people knew about it. Uh, on the one hand, they hoped that this instrument would never be used in war, and therefore they hoped that we would not start out by using it. On the other hand, they hoped, or other people hoped, that it would put an end to this war, save countless lives, put an end to a a, a butchery that had been going on for many years and had been marked by atrocities, concentration camps, murderous raids on cities, um, Rotterdam and Dresden and Tokyo itself. And that on the whole, we were inclined to think that if it was needed to put an end to the war and had a chance of so doing, we thought that was the right thing to do. It is not that we said a test isn't feasible. But we said we don't think we could recommend one that was likely to induce surrender. You ask yourself, would the Japanese government as then constituted and with the bitter division between the the peace party and the war party, would it have been influenced by a, an enormous nuclear firecracker detonated at great height, doing little damage? Uh, and your answer is as good as mine, I don't know. I know only that I was told that an invasion was planned, that it would be necessary, and that it would be terribly costly. The device they call a gadget will work. There were a hundred things that could be done wrong, any one of which, as far as we knew, and we knew pretty much, uh, could make the test a failure, not because there was anything in principle wrong, but because we had muffed one of the many complicated pieces of machinery which we were using. There seemed to be two great views among scientists, and no doubt would be among others if, the, if people knew about it. Uh, on the one hand, they hoped that this instrument would never be used in war, and therefore they hoped that we would not start out by using it. On the other hand, they hoped, or other people hoped, that it would put an end to this war, save countless lives, put an end to a a butchery that had been going on 
for many years and had been marked by atrocities, concentration camps, murderous raids on cities, um, Rotterdam and Dresden and Tokyo itself. And that on the whole, we were inclined to think that if it was needed to put an end to the war and had a chance of so doing, we thought that was the right thing to do. We knew the world would not be the same. Few people laughed. Few people cried. Most people were silent. I remembered the line from the Hindu scripture, the Bhagavad Gita, Vishnu is trying to persuade the prince that he should do his duty and to impress him takes on his multi-armed form and says, now I am become death, the destroyer of worlds. I suppose we all thought that one way or another.